Right now, CBS New York's Book Club with Mary Calvi. Well, hello, how are you? The legendary Audrey Hepburn in the 1954 film Sabrina. The classic movie is the inspiration for the novel The Audrey Hepburn Estate by Brenda Janowitz. Themes of love, the meaning of home, and how the past remains present are at the center of the CBS New York Book Club's latest Reader's Choice. Hello and welcome to the CBS New York Book Club. I'm Mary Calvi. That elegant black dress that Audrey Hepburn wore in the movie Sabrina is captured on the cover of the Audrey Hepburn Estate, a perfect choice for our club that reads books written by New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut authors or set in the tri-state area. And these smiling faces are some of our members. We recently had a mid-read meetup and they shared their love of reading and the reasons why they joined the club. Well, this is my first time uh, joining a book club, and it's fun. I'm a voracious reader. The book group suggests the book that you would never have found. It's just a fun way to expand your reading. I like historical fiction. I love uh, reading mysteries, actually. Uh, big Sherlock Holmes fan. To be able to share something that seems private while you're reading, but is just so wonderful to share after the fact. So that's why I love book clubs. Our club members are very active on our Facebook page. Producer Danielle Parker will share some of their questions and comments throughout the show. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Mary. Book club members have had a lot to say about the Audrey Hepburn estate. We've been reading this book for just over a month, and that mid-read meetup we had was just a part of the discussion. We can't wait to dive right in. Mary? Thanks, Danielle. And now to our author, Brenda Janowitz. I had the great pleasure of meeting up with her at Tiffany's Landmark for Tea at the new Blue Box Cafe. Well, how could I say no? It was also wild and romantic. Audrey Hepburn is a Hollywood icon. How do I look? Her beauty, her style, even her singing captured the world's attention. Wherever you're going, I'm going your way. But it may be this one scene from Breakfast at Tiffany's that cemented her legacy. And under the magic of Tiffany's ceiling in the new Blue Box Cafe, I had the pleasure of meeting up with author Brenda Janowitz, whose novel weaves elements of Hepburn's life into a story about a woman in two worlds with two loves. And of course, there's a shattering secret. Oh, please, where is he? Please tell me, are we in the most perfect place ever? <laughs> you couldn't get more perfect than Tiffany. The CBS New York Book Club voted, and the Audrey Hepburn Estate was named our Reader's Choice. More than 1,500 people cast their votes to read this page-turner together. But before we dig into the novel, I think I'm going to go right for a dessert. I like the way you think. It's like a dream. Speaking of dreams, being an author was always one of Janowitz's. I was always a reader and always a writer. So I decided to become a lawyer. It just seemed like the perfect fit for me. And I did love law school and I loved working, but I just didn't love working quite as many hours. <laughs> um, so I like to joke I was one of those unhappy lawyers sort of walking the the halls of my law firm thinking about the stories that I wanted to write. So for my 30th birthday, my best friend organized a group gift and she got all of my friends together and they sent me to a writing class. Wow, yeah, how that about that? She changed your life. She did. She knew it was something I wanted and I think what she said was, you know, enough talking about being a writer, now you're actually going to be one. And that was when I started taking my writing seriously. And I think at first, when I wrote my first novel, I did it as sort of a lark, mm -hmm. just I thought it would be fun to do, and someone had likened it to a marathon. It's like you just want to finish. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, I'll be satisfied if I can write an entire novel. But you know, you're a type A lawyer, so once you finish, you're like, hmm, maybe I should get this published, and the rest sure. is history. And the rest is history. <laughs> the novel, The Grace Kelly Dress, led to another, The Liz Taylor Ring, and now the latest, actually her eighth novel. You took a beautiful subject and you weaved in family drama and mystery and I was just caught up in it. So first tell me about why Audrey Hepburn. Well, hello, how are you? 
you? I've really been obsessed with her my whole life. When I was a little girl, on Sundays, I used to watch black and white movies with my mom. And we watched all these fabulous Hollywood starlets, but the one who really caught my eye was Audrey Hepburn. I watched all of her movies, and I just couldn't get enough. So when I was continuing this tradition of talking about famous Hollywood icons, I've already done Grace Kelly and Elizabeth Taylor. I knew I had to do Audrey, but I think I had to work up to it to be ready to tackle such a glamorous and incredible, strong woman. What we loved at the CBS New York Book Club were the mentions of the New York areas. We're talking about Long Island. You mentioned Queens. Thank you to the note on Teddy Roosevelt. I loved <gasps> reading about that little piece. That was really important for us, and I wonder, it must be a, a beautiful connection for you, being that you live on Long Island. Absolutely. Yeah, I've really enjoyed writing um, stories that take place in New York and on Long Island. There's something really fun about it. And I just love the idea of tapping into sort of who I am and making the books more personal in that way. Joining us now is Brenda Janowitz. Welcome. We're so thrilled to have you here with us in our studio. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here. And congratulations on the Audrey Hepburn Estate being selected as the Reader's Choice. We were so thrilled to hear this. Thank you so much. Okay, we need to talk about this obsession <laughs> about Audrey Hepburn. And you know, there were so many beautiful facts about her that were weaved into the story. One of them was that she was a foodie. I had no idea. Me neither. I had absolutely no idea. You know, it's funny when you start the reading research, I always think that I know my subject so well, the research will be a piece of cake, but there were so many things I discovered about her, and one was her love for food, chocolate in particular. And I really enjoyed how you brought that into your main character, she's a chef. Absolutely. Uh, was it a lot of fun tasting? I mean, what? tell me, what was that research like? It was so much fun. When I made the move to make her a chef, I knew I really had to figure out what her lifestyle would be like and what her catering company would be like and I did a ton of research online looking at all these delectable menus so I was always kind of hungry when I was reading. Yeah, I bet, I bet. That's the, <laughs> one of the best parts about it is tasting the food. Um, you know what was really neat is at the end of the story you uh, bring in the, all of these facts and you let us know what was weaved into the story and I thought what a gorgeous way to just put a bow on on the book so congrats on that and you, you've Thank done you. this for a number of your other books too right so I did it with my last book the Liz Taylor ring and it really started because as I was writing the book I was sort of weaving in the research that I did and my inspiration and a friend Jillian Cantor who's a novelist uh, she said well why is this scene set on a yacht I said well Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton famously lived on a yacht and she was like oh that's interesting you should write all these little things down mm -hmm. and so I did it for the Liz Taylor ring and then I had so much fun with it I did it again for Audrey. It almost makes you want to go back and read the whole story again <laughs> really it was <laughs> what I really enjoyed about it. We have so many more questions for you from the CBS New York Book Club so let's head over now to book club producer Danielle Parker who's reading them all for us. Hey Danielle. Hi this Mary. Is so this is so Brenda. exciting to have Brenda here. I know there's a whole bunch of people who are watching who are also excited that you're here and a lot of our readers said that they loved that the book was set on Long Island. Patty wrote that the novel brought back many memories she has from being a teenager growing up there. And members want to know more details about the Rolling Hill Estate, the setting in the book. Doran, a Long Island native, has this question. Brenda, I'm a North Shore girl, and all I could think about is which house you were inspired by. Was it the house where the Nassau Museum is now, or Westbury Gardens, um, the CW Post Mansion? Which one? Which one? I love that question, and the answer is all of them. I was inspired by all of the Gilded Age mansions on Long Island, not one in particular. And I really enjoyed hearing um, that you actually created a map of your <laughs> estate, right? You're inspired by all of these estates, but in order for continuity to work throughout the book, you needed to make sure you were in the right room at the right time. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And there's a lot of outdoor scenes, especially when the characters are kids. And so I had to make sure if they were climbing the tree, how would they get to the staff quarters and so on. So I created a little map for myself just to sort of keep things straight. And had you visited a number of houses? I'm sure you have been from Long Island. You've probably been to them all. Yeah, it feels like I've been to them all. At one point, I'll have to do a little checklist to find <laughs> out if I have. I've been to quite a few, and I've been inside many of them. A lot of them are um, public spaces now, so anyone can go. So I really took inspiration, you know, a little here, a little there from 
from all of them. I want to ask you about your timing because it takes place in present day. However, you go back often and visit them as youngsters and sort of tap into your middle aged self, right? <laughs> in order to Absolutely. create their characters then. But I really, really loved seeing your main character grow up and see the woman she was to become. Thank you. You know, with the Grace Kelly dress, I had three different women and three generations. And then for the Liz Taylor ring, I wanted to do something different. So I had three siblings, all living in the present, and the past timeline was their parents and their love story. So I said to myself, how can I make it different for Audrey? And I said, ooh, I will have the same characters, present and then as kids. So my two timelines are the same characters, just at different ages. Okay, well, let's talk about the loves in oh, her life, right? Of course. She has to <laughs> choose. What is she going to do? I was, oh, where, where, who is she going to choose? Um, throughout, it really kept kept me going to, to figure out and try to, try, I was sort of like looking ahead and trying to determine <laughs> what you would have wanted and who would you have wanted for her? Oh, it's such a tough question because I'm really sort of in love with both of them. <laughs> it was really important to me to create two characters and she could really be with either one. And she had to sort of decide which one was right for the life she wanted to start living. Uh, but it wasn't going to be like all of a sudden in the end, one of them was actually a bad guy. Like, <laughs> surprise, he's actually bad. So I, want, I very much felt that the two love interests should be, she could really choose either one. It sort of depends on her and where she is in her life. Well, well done, well <laughs> done. So what do you say we check in with our book club members? I know they have a few other questions they want to ask, Danielle. They do, but I have to say, I won't give any spoilers to people who have not finished the book, say, who she ended up with, right choice. <laughs> totally right choice. So our members also told us not only about what they want to know about the book, but how they felt while reading this book. Linda said that when she loves a book, she tends to slow down near the end because once she's finished, she feels like she's lost good friends. And as Brenda and Mary has already said, this is Brenda's third novel inspired by Hollywood legends. Before Audrey Hepburn, she wrote The Grace Kelly Dress and The Liz Taylor Ring. And those books inspired this question from Erin. Do you choose the icon first and then write a story around them? Or do you have the idea of a story first and then you choose your Hollywood star? Well, what do you think? I love that question. I sort of have to take it back to the Grace Kelly dress because mm -hmm. that was the first time I did a book with a Hollywood icon. And for that dress, this, for that book rather, the story came first. It was a story of a dress passed down through three generations. And when I started designing the dress sort of in my head and on the page, there was no other dress that came to mind than Grace Kelly's. So Grace Kelly came after the dress. But then I was having fun with the Hollywood icons <laughs> and the heirlooms, so I decided I would do jewelry next, and so it was easy to pair that with Elizabeth Taylor. And once I was done working on the Elizabeth Taylor book, uh, I knew I just had to do Audrey. She's been a favorite of mine for my whole life, really. So Audrey came first for this one. Yeah, but then we got bigger. Now we're in the whole state. <laughs> exactly, right. The heirloom had to keep getting bigger. It started at a wedding dress, then an 11 carat diamond, and now it's an entire estate. <laughs> Can we share the big news that you received recently about the Grace Kelly dress? I would love to. Yeah, tell us, I mean, I'm just beyond thrilled for you. Thank you so much. So film rights have sold for the Grace Kelly dress to Hallmark Crown Media, and I could not be more excited. Oh, I mean, this is a dream, really, for authors. First, you had a Absolutely. dream of becoming an author, and now look at you. <laughs> I want to know, is there a timeline? Should the CBS New York Book Club start our movie night? I mean, what, what's going on? Tell us. Well, we should definitely start Okay, well, that's night. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right now, there's no timeline because of the writer's strike, but I'm hoping that that will resolve soon, and we'll get a timeline going, and I'll share it on my social media channel. Oh, I cannot wait, and we'll share it, too. So, Thank so you. fantastic. A lot more to discuss with Brenda, of course, our Reader's Choice author, and we're getting ready to announce our next three fic picks so you can vote on the next book the book club will read together we'll tell you when we come back right now cbs new york's book club with mary calvi there was a boatman to take care of the boats this scene from the movie Sabrina was not filmed on Long Island, but at a property that still exists today in Rye in Westchester County. The setting was also used for a scene featuring Audrey Hepburn and Humphrey Bogart. 
Welcome back to the CBS New York Book Club. The movie Sabrina was the inspiration for our reader's choice, the Audrey Hepburn estate. And two of the dresses, I thought I read something in the book that seemed to me to match what was in the movie as well. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. You know, when you're writing a book called The Audrey Hepburn Estate, I think that readers expect, or at least I would expect as a reader, to get some of the fashion, the glam. So in one scene when our protagonist, Emma, is a child, well, not a child, she's a teen at this point, she goes to a black tie affair and she wears the white dress with the black embroidery mm -hmm. that we all know is mm -hmm. the Sabrina dress. But then when she's an adult and going to a wedding, she wears the black dress that we saw earlier that's inspired that's the inspiration for the cover design such glam throughout i loved <laughs> that your main character wasn't like audrey hepburn glamorous <laughs> really spectacular in so many ways and there was so much drama in her life that she had to overcome and yeah. i really really felt um close to her as i was reading it i wanted to know a bit bit about your writing process i know for me i'm always like glued to my one desk you know i have all these research documents there and i've always envied authors who sort of like oh let me go travel and write somewhere and i wonder for you what is that like uh, day to day hour by hour I mean tell us about it yeah you know it's interesting because for every book it's different and I find every book needs something a little different for this book I started just free writing trying to figure out who my characters were as I was doing the research so I was writing and then the research was informing what I was writing and then I was just cutting like 50 pages at a time to sort of create a story so I wouldn't recommend this for other writers <laughs> to do it that way but I think that's what this story needed uh, typically I write at home that's really if if I had my druthers I would always write at home in my office on my big desktop computer but I am a busy working mom so oftentimes I'm writing by using the voice memo app on my phone oh, or I've got um, an iPad with a keyboard and I'm just sort of writing wherever I need to be. Uh, it's a little of everything. I love that. All right, let's get back to Danielle. She has an, so many questions from our book club members, and ooh, what do they want to know now? They want to know, but they found very interesting is that this book isn't just based on aspects of Audrey Hepburn, uh, on the movie Sabrina, but also on aspects of Audrey Hepburn's life. Susan wrote that when she finished the book, she was so impressed with Audrey Hepburn that there was so much about her that Susan didn't know. And Lori asks about how Brenda juggled the more serious themes that were inspired by Hepburn's life. And I love the fact that you put life's important subjects in. Now, how did you formulate your approach for um, your approach to the subject of displacement and restitution, which can be um, difficult and sorrowful subjects to approach? She's right about that. How did you do that? Well, you know, when I started my research, one of the things I was shocked to learn was that Audrey Hepburn lived during Nazi occupation of Germany for five years of her life. That was, I felt like I knew everything there was to know about Audrey Hepburn, and there was this piece of her childhood that I never knew about. And I just felt like that had to make its way into the book somehow. Once I decided I was doing an estate and I wanted to throw in all these Gothic elements, it sort of felt natural that maybe the kids uh, when they were exploring the house, they might discover some Nazi memorabilia. Mm. So I started there, but then I just sort of couldn't stop, and it became part of the B plot line. And really what was really incredible about it is there was this uh, surprise element to it. I had never expected that that's what they would have found. Yeah. And for you to be able to put all of that together and, and create such a story, I mean, it really takes a skilled hand to do something like that. So uh, bravo to you Thank to you. be able to bring that. And like you said, so so many parts of Audrey Hepburn's life that many of us didn't know. So thank you for that. Let's get back to Danielle. We have so many questions. We want to get in as many as we possibly can. So tell us what they want to know now, Danielle. One other question that people had. Some members said that reading the Audrey Hepburn estate made them curious about what else Brenda had written, um, and not only her novels. So that inspired a question from Jean Marie. You toggle so effortlessly between personal essays and fiction, historical fiction, and I'm just curious what you find to be most challenging in each genre and if you have a preference for either one. That's such a good question. That's a great question. I find them both difficult. <laughs> <laughs> both difficult. <laughs> I understand. It, they're just such different things. Um, 
Gosh, it's hard to say. You know, with the personal essay, the nice thing is it's about a thousand words and it's something you can complete. When you're writing a novel, it often takes a full year to write even maybe just a first draft. But a personal essay you can do in a few days, maybe a week. So there's something really satisfying about that. Uh, I think in my fiction, I'm often exploring things that happen in my life. But sometimes it just needs the personal essay where I really sort of need to handle it head on. When you're writing, I feel like it's not just the first draft, but writing also is about the rewriting and the rewriting and maybe another draft. Absolutely. <laughs> and so uh, I think a lot of people don't realize how many drafts authors go through before <laughs> they even present to one person, even their best friend. Absolutely. Uh, my best friend is in the studio, yeah, so I know. we can ask her oh, later. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, writing is rewriting. So that first draft often is just getting the idea down and figuring out what is this? What, what is this book about? What is this essay about? Um, sometimes I'll send it to my best friend immediately. Uh, and sometimes it'll take a few drafts till I sort of figure out what it is. And sometimes I need someone's help to figure out what it is, especially with the essays. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you've written something and you don't actually know what you're trying to say. Uh, so you do need that editing. Uh, speaking of the different genres and the different styles of writing, I understand that you are about to undertake something brand new in your world of writing. Tell us about that. Can we say uh, it first of all? Absolutely. Is this allowed? Okay, great, oh, great, yeah. great. I don't, want, I don't want to spill anything I'm not supposed to. I'm so excited. I just signed a contract with Disney for my first young adult novel. And uh, for people who know me, they would think that's natural because on the inside, I'm a 17-year-old girl. <laughs> uh, but this is the story of a woman who, well, a teenager, <laughs> uh, just decides on a whim that instead of going straight to college, she's going to do a gap year and travel Europe. How about that? Um, is that something that maybe you'll be doing? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? That sounds amazing. Yeah, it does. Well, I want to come along too. <laughs> and I, I think we have a lot of members who might as well. Um, let's, we're going to talk all about what's coming up next, and we will be right back with CBS New York Book Club. So glad. Right now, CBS New York's Book Club with Mary Calvi. And welcome back to the CBS New York Book Club. We're getting ready to vote on the next book in our book club picks, and we will be revealing our top three fic picks Wednesday on CBS 2 News this morning. They will be on our book club Facebook page as well as on our website, cbsnewyork.com. You can just scan the QR code on your screen. Readers will vote for their favorite, and then we will announce our reader's choice next week. We'll be able to read all about it together. And tell me about the day you learned that you were one of our picks, three chosen. Brenda, you were one of them, and we were so excited to see that. It was such a thrill when I found out, but the truth is, the day I found out, my mom had died that morning. And, you know, friends told me after she died to look for signs that she was still with me. And a few hours after she died, I learned I was one of the thick picks, and I just couldn't help but think that that was one of my signs. I'm so sorry. Thank what you. What you've been through. I know you delayed Thank your you. book tour yes. as well. Had she had a chance to read your book? She did. Really? You know, the publisher sometimes sends you early copies, and when I got them, I don't know, I just had a sense that I should send one to her. So I signed it to her and my dad and sent it down to Florida so she got a chance to see it and enjoy it and talk about it, which was great. I'm so glad that you Thank had that you. opportunity. And it, we had a chance to meet your dad on the uh, mid, <laughs> the, our Zoom meetup during mm -hmm. our mid-read, and that was really, really lovely. It was great. Um, such an inspiration, I'm sure, for you, because she's one of the reasons you became so interested in these Hollywood icons. You used to Absolutely. watch movies with her, right? That's right. On Sunday afternoons, we would watch black and white movies together and just sort of fall in love with all of the Hollywood starlets. Oh, what a story. I, really, it was so special for you to be here with us, and we're so thrilled um, to, to be part of this together. So many of the readers really enjoyed your story so much. I mean, I was stuck in it. I mean, I couldn't put it down, so I really appreciate you writing this amazing story, and so appreciative to everyone who's joined for our book club discussion as well, Danielle. It's been great, and thank you so much, Mary, Brenda. The readers loved it, and you can get be a part of Club Calvi too. Join our conversation on the CBS New York Book Club Facebook page. It is a fantastic group. And thanks again, Mary and Brenda.
Danielle, thank you so much. Um, always nice to hear what readers have to think about your work, right? Thank you so much. This whole experience has been like a dream. I am so thrilled. <laughs> and what a magical time we had at Tiffany's, right? Oh, good. We'll have to go back. Sounds like it's so much fun. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us live here for the CBS New York Book Club. And thank you all for being with us as well. We'll see you next time. Thank you.